great. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm going. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, hello and welcome to the Zoominar on Proteinopathies. Uh, today we have uh, Dr. Yehud Gazid from Tel Aviv University, Israel. Woody, we call him. Woody received bachelor's degree from Tel Aviv University and then um, PhD degree from Weizmann Institute of Science. After that, he did postdoctoral research at MIT. Then he joined Tel Aviv University as a faculty. His research, I know his research uh, in, the, uh, in the Echel Shoy Laboratory at Weizmann uh, as a grad student uh, made outstanding contributions uh, in the field of antimicrobial peptides, particularly providing fresh insights into the antimicrobial mechanism um, of action. Uh, he has then continued to work on um, in, in, in the interdisciplinary area of uh, peptide and peptide self-assembly and protein misfolding, protein aggregation, and making outstanding contributions to a variety of areas. He has also served in other positions, which include um, the chief scientist of the Israeli Ministry of Science and Technology, and also as the vice president for research and development at Tel Aviv University. And because of his outstanding contributions, he has received a number of honors and awards. I will mention two of them, Hestin Award for Young Scientist under age 44, um, and in, in, in 2015, he was knighted by the Italian Republic for his service to the science and society. His current research focuses on the molecular structure and assembly at the nanoscale. Uh, so with that introduction, I would like to invite uh, Dr. Gazit to present his um, uh, talk in this um, Zoom in out. Would you go ahead? Yeah, thank you very much, Rams. It's, it's really a pleasure to be here. Um, Thank you very much for the kind introduction. And uh, as, you can, as you stated, I, I was in the field of protein and peptide aggregation for the last uh, almost three decades. Uh, but uh, today I will start with peptides, but I will move to uh, a works on metabolites and the interplay uh, uh, with peptides as some of you heard me uh, in the... Miami meeting, as well as others, it's been our interest in the, in the last, um, almost last decade. Um, so indeed, uh, let me see if I can move this forward. Some reason. Oh, okay. And um, so I was thinking about the fact that actually the last time that I flew out of the country was to Miami, uh, to the um, uh, amyloid uh, uh, conference in which, uh, Many of you participated. As you will, you, some of you may recognize yourself in the in the in the photos, as well as the nice place uh, that uh, we visited uh, at the end of the conference. Uh, I don't know when we will travel again, uh, but you mentioned some of my um, administrative uh, positions. So uh, I had the privilege to know some of the people who might help. Now in the in the current uh, situation, uh, this is a guy you may recognize. Uh, both of us were vice presidents uh, about a decade ago when I hosted him at Tel Aviv University. Uh, he became a president. I did not, but uh, hopefully uh, uh, now things will go maybe in a different way also for the global world with the, uh, the new leadership in the U.S. But back to science. So our approach in the study of amyloid formation was, is a, a reductionist one. Um, we are, while amyloid, all of you know, are being formed in most cases by polypeptide of 30, 40 amino acids or even longer. Um, it was demonstrated that shorter peptides, this was our starting point, the shortest hexapeptide uh, can form amyloid fiber, uh, uh, fibers of similar physical and other structural properties as compared to the much larger uh, protein and pe polypeptide uh, building blocks. And we look for uh, finding uh, uh, short peptide fragments uh, uh, to pinpoint the residues that play a role in the molecular recognition and self-assembly processes that lead to the formation of the structures. And based on the mechanistic insight, we uh, uh, identified novel fragment as short as dipeptide, the shortest you could get, 
that can form amyloid like nanostructures and develop ways to control this process. So, almost two decades ago, uh, the first peptide, uh, pentapeptide, and tetrapeptides that we recognized were from uh, human calcitonin. Uh, calcitonin forms amyloid structures um, in the case of thyroid carcinoma. And this was, in this case, it was a little bit like a detective work. We knew that the formation of the uh, amyloids by the full length uh, a peptide is pH dependent, meaning that it should be uh, um, uh, relate to the uh, charging state uh, uh, of charged amino acid. Luckily enough, we had only two charged amino acids in the entire um, uh, sequence, this aspartic acid here and the lysine here. So to make a long story short, double meaning, we cut the, uh, the calcitonin into smaller and smaller pieces and we're the first to show that the pentapeptide, DF and KF uh, uh, can form typical uh, uh, amyloid fibers and even a shorter fragment, uh, DF, and K could form fibular assemblies, although they were a, a bit thicker than a, a canonical a, a, a amyloid fibers. A year later, uh, uh, being, in, and, um, uh, being inspired by the ability of such short fragments to form amyloid, we decided to, show, uh, to study even shorter uh, fragments. So uh, this is the case of the beta amyloid from uh, amyloids in, uh, in uh, Alzheimer's disease. And here the starting point was the ability of a heptapeptide uh, uh, to form uh, uh, amyloids and two um, pentapeptides to inhibit the formation. And the common denominator between the former and the inhibitors were uh, peptide motif, the diphenylalanine. And we demonstrated that the diphenylalanine could form ordered assemblies, although not. Uh, 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 canonical amyloids, but uh, in many senses, uh, 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 similar to amyloids in, in the uh, uh, physical properties, as well as the organization, as I will uh, uh, show later. Um, three years later, it was, was the really the uh, demonstration, the first demonstration for the ability of dipeptides uh, to form amyloid fibers when we used the uh, uh, those dipeptides in which we blocked the termini with the acetylation on the N-terminal and, uh, um, and amidation on the C-terminal, were able to form typical, as you see in panel A, typical amyloid fibers by a dipeptide. And working on diphenylalanine as a very simple model allowed us to understand not only the ability of very short peptide fragment to form amyloid assemblies, but also the physical properties of assemblies that are being formed by such simple and, and, and peptides. Uh, and so this is our reductionist schematic uh, um, uh, view. Uh, we move from 42 amino acid uh, beta amyloid to exapeptide, and then a dipeptide that form typical amyloid fibers. And what we realized is the fact, and again, I'm going 15, 16 years ago, but as you will see, it's very relevant to things that we do just now. Uh, we could demonstrate that uh, uh, the structure being formed by diphenylalanine are extremely uh, rigid from the mechani uh, mechanical point of view. Uh, so you're using AFM indentation, we could demonstrate that uh, these structures has young modulus of about 20 gigapascal, uh, uh, which is quite rigid. It is similar to bono teeth in, in, in terms of uh, mechanical rigidity. Several years later, uh, uh, in a very nice uh, uh, paper uh, in Nature Nanotechnology, uh, uh, Thomas Knowles from Cambridge and Marcus Buller from the other Cambridge from MIT, uh, um, show that also typical amyloids, uh, protein-based amyloids are uh, quite rigid and similar to what we see with just the dipeptide. And as you will see later, we always, uh, I, I will demonstrate it over and over again in the cases in which we see physical properties in very short peptides, later on in metabolites, and then we see similar things with the amyloid 
try to convince you that it's, a, it's really a, a, just a large continuum in which we have proteins, peptides, short peptides, very short peptides, and later on, uh, metabolites. Other properties that we uh, could see in the, in the beginning, thinking about it not related to what we think about amyloids usually are a, a piezoelectricity. We could see piezoelectricity, the ability to get electric current by applying mechanical force on the structures that are being formed by the dipeptide. Um, now this is not published yet, but we're not thinking about that it might have also a, a, a pathological uh, consequences if you think about a situation in which you have piezoelectric materials that are uh, uh, being placed in, the, in your brain in the case that you have some uh, uh, protein or metabolite aggregation in your degenerative disorder. Other pro uh, and, and some people take it as, as many of you know, we are uh, also interested in uh, technology. So some people take it also to um, uh, a technological application. This is a work from the group of Rus and Yang when he was still in Minnesota, now he moved to China. Uh, a building uh, um, some device that is utilizing the ability of the FF, the diphenylalanine uh, uh, peptide structures to um, uh, harvest energy from mechanical uh, uh, stimulus and lighting L LCD with the FF diphenylalanine uh, uh, diphenylalanine letters. Other properties that we could see with the simple dipeptide uh, 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 building blocks uh, is the ability to see very strong luminescence uh, in, the, in the visible uh, with um, uh, emission around uh, uh, 200 uh, and uh, uh, 40, uh, uh, 450 nanometers from these structures. Again, this interplay between the short peptide fragment and properties that were later found with the uh, uh, amyloids is a nice work by uh, 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 the group of Kaminsky in collaboration with uh, our uh, with uh, late Chris Dobson, but we all miss, uh, in which uh, they demonstrated also the ability of amyloid fibers to show just the same uh, uh, luminescence as we see with emission at 450 nanometer. So this is what we see with the peptide structures. And this is what was shown by the Kaminsky group in collaboration with Chris Dobson uh, uh, with the amyloid fibers. Uh, other properties that we could uh, uh, see uh, for this peptide, amyloid derived peptide structures is semiconductivity. Uh, this relates to other things that we do uh, quite extensively related to technology. And uh, today it's, a, it's more, uh, the, the talk is uh, more related to uh, uh, biologists and, uh, and medical uh, and people interested in, in biomedical application. So I would just uh, direct you to a review we published uh, with the more than three years ago on, uh, on science about the self-assembling peptide semiconductor. And now we have a long catalog of different peptides that can form different structures of different physical properties. So until uh, about a decade ago, uh, I could uh, uh, mention all this work on the peptide, of course, in much more details and uh, trying to convince the audience, I think with some success, uh, that indeed what we see from the dipeptides up to proteins of 100 plus amino acids, such as the uh, alpha synuclein, is a continuum of structures that have similar organization in the term of a beta sheet, fibrillar assemblies with the nanoscale fibers, similar mechanical properties, similar, uh, uh, similar uh, uh, optical properties, and similar biological properties and we could even explain that the reason uh, uh, for the organization is the unique properties of polypeptides 
with a peptide bond, its resonance, the ability to have stacking of the, uh, of the peptides one on top of the other and form these structures. But what divergence in, in the last decade uh, was a control that uh, uh, was done by a, a very talented uh, PhD student, now a faculty member, Tel Aviv University, Lee Adler Abomovic, uh, in which we uh, decided to study whether a single amino acid, in this case was uh, phenylalanine, since we were much interested in diphenylalanine and other phenylalanine containing uh, uh, peptides, whether a single amino acid could, could form structures. The answer should have been no. And then we could have a proof that what drives the formation of amyloid fibers is, is this um, interaction uh, between the peptide based on the, on the, uh, the peptide uh, bond and uh, its uh, uh, two-dimensional properties and the ability to stack one on top of the other. But when we studied the uh, 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 phenylalanine, a dose concentration in which could, we could see the formation of typical amyloids, or in those uh, 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 from the peptides, or the proteins, we could not see the formation of the structures. But if we went to concentrations uh, around one millimolar, we could see things that look like amyloid in the terms of nanoscale fibers. They bind uh, a, a, a THT uh, indicative dye just like amyloids, and upon binding of a, a, a Congo red, as you could see in panel C, we could see typical um, uh, birefringence, this uh, uh, apple green birefringence, uh, as uh, many of you working with amyloid, is, uh, uh, the, for many years it was, uh, still it is uh, one of the, the, the most distinct property of amyloid is seeing this beautiful, uh, uh, this beautiful um, uh, uh, birefringence between cross polarizers. Moreover, when we used electron diffraction, we could see typical pattern as for ordered assemblies, just as we see with uh, uh, with canonical uh, uh, amyloids that are made by uh, uh, proteins. And uh, then we scratch our heads to, to try to think what is, the, what is the meaning of the formation of amyloid-like structures in very high concentration of phenylalanine of millimolar. This is not the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, physiological concentration of phenylalanine whatsoever. The physiological uh, uh, concentration of phenylalanine even if somebody has a very a, a, a meal that is uh, much protein uh, uh, rich, and uh, it's in the order of um, forty to fifty micromole. But for some individuals, they can have phenylalanine concentration over one uh, millimolar, one thousand micromolar. Uh, this is in the case of uh, PKU phenylketonuria. Uh, uh, this is a disorder in which individuals lack the enzyme that, confer, uh, that con uh, uh, phenylalanine hydroxylase that converts phenylalanine into, uh, uh, into tyrosine. And in this case, they have, unless it's treated with a very strict diet, they have concentration of phenylalanine in their blood in the order of 1.2 millimolar or more, so two more than uh, uh, two orders of magnitude, or uh, uh, almost two orders of magnitude higher than a, a normal uh, uh, phenylalanine concentrations. Uh, many of people are uh, uh, familiar with the PKU, although it's uh, quite a rare disease. Not so rare; it's, it's among the one of the most uh, common between rare disease. But uh, as you have on, on diet drinks that contains aspartame, it's a dipeptide that contains phenylalanine. Aspartame is a, 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 a aspartic acid, phenylalanine, methyl ester, so it's, it's a dipeptide. 
Uh, it contains phenylalanine and it's, uh, people with PKU, phenylketanuria, cannot uh, consume it. Um, and when we think about the symptoms for individuals uh, who has PKU and are not treated with a, a very strict diet, it reminds us of uh, um, some neurodegenerative disorders. So you have mental decline, you have some uh, behavior abnormality, seizures, and, and, uh, and others. And so we suggested that it might be that indeed phenylalanine assembles into uh, uh, toxic fibers in the case of uh, uh, PKU, and uh, we may have uh, amyloid-like etiology. Um, so this was an hypothesis, we had to check it, and we could see that indeed, if we uh, uh, um, assemble uh, phenylalanine at concentration higher than one millimolar, we could get a, a toxic fibrils, uh, uh, as we could see with uh, uh, save, uh, cell viability assays. And we'd add an excellent control, which was alanine, which does not form uh, amyloids, uh, in, even in concentration as high as uh, 15 uh, millimolar. Uh, because in the past, people thought that uh, the toxic effect or, or, or the uh, neurological abnormalities that you see in the case of PKU results from having such large amount of uh, the amino acid uh, in the uh, blood and tissue of, the, of those patients. But we could see that you can have a very high concentration of alanine and get no toxic effect. But if you have a, a concentration of uh, phenylalanine, even uh, 15 times lower, you could see already uh, uh, quite significant toxic effects. Moreover, we could raise antibodies toward these fibrils, and we could use, as shown in, in, in panel B, uh, we could uh, use the electron microscopy with gold labeled uh, uh, antibodies to see uh, the binding of these uh, structures to the fibrils. Moreover, we could pull down the, uh, the fibers and deplete the toxicity of these fibrillar assemblies. Uh, we sent this to publication and then uh, we had uh, tough referees and they asked us to show it in animal models. And uh, luckily, uh, 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 PKU mo uh, mice model available, uh, in mice, the, uh, the metabolism phenylalanine is just the same as uh, in uh, human patients. And we could see as you see in lane A, that in the case of the phenylalanine mice, there's a spontaneous uh, generation of antibodies that recognize phenylalanine assemblies. Uh, uh, lane two is, uh, this is the homozygous, which completely lack the enzyme. You, could, uh, you see very strong immunological response uh, uh, towards phenylalanine fibers in, in lane two, it's the heterozygous in which you have low amount of uh, the assemblies uh, of the enzymes. So we have some assemblies. You see some uh, 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 raising of the antibodies to some degree, and in normal mice in lane three you don't see anything. So we send it uh, uh, back to the, the journal, and then we have the tough one tough uh, referee accepted it. The other one wanted to uh, 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 demonstrate it in human patients. Luckily. Uh, Lee is a very, some of you know her, she is a very stubborn person. She find a, a, band, a, 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 a tissue bank in a brain bank in, in the Netherlands, in which we could get brains from post-mortem from PKU patients. And we could see for the first time in the brain of the patients, the uh, formation of deposits, just like what you see with typical amyloids uh, of the, of the uh, phenylalanine that could be stained with the antibodies as well as the Congo red. Uh, so we could see that in the case of phenylalanine, you can get the formation of structures that look like amyloid, that are toxic as amyloid and can form deposits in the brain of patients and raise uh, uh, 
immunological response in uh, model animals. So going back to the scheme of the reduction scheme, so we moved further from the dipeptides also to a single amino acid. And luckily, working on very simple systems, immediately we had many groups around the world studying phenylalanine assembly. This is a very nice work from Mike Bowers from Santa Barbara, in which he studied using mass spectrometry and the organization of phenylalanine into, into assemblies. In our paper, we suggested, as you can see on the left side, that there is some uh, organization, a linear organization of the structure. He actually demonstrated that this is true in high pH, but in neutral pH, the one that you have in, uh, uh, in uh, the cells and, uh, and the blood of the, of the patient, there's a very interesting organization of the, of the structure. As you can see here, there's electrostatic interaction between the uh, uh, positively charged uh, uh, N termini and negatively charged C termini of the peptide, uh, which builds a core that is stabilized by electrostatic interaction. But towards the solution, you have these very hydrophobic uh, 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 phenyl groups. So, what you have here, it's an oligomeric structure that is very hydrophobic. And uh, as thermodynamics tell us, it will like thermodynamically uh, 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 to bind to uh, hydrophobic uh, uh, structures like membranes, as, as we could demonstrate later, and I will show you. We could see that these structures are very uh, a strong, a, a very strong activity as uh, membrane destabilizers, um, as we could see also with the uh, amyloids that are being formed by peptides and uh, proteins. Moreover, phenylalanine is only one example uh, for the accumulation of, uh, of metabolites. Unfortunately, we have many inborn of metabolism disorders, as, as they call uh, individuals uh, who lack uh, uh, enzymes that are related to some uh, biochemical uh, activity. Um, so you could have... Um, accumulation of adenine, arginine, cysteine, glycine, as all the list that you see here on, on, on the slide. And in a very tedious, systematic, uh, non-biased way, we studied all those different uh, metabolites. And we could realize that not only phenylalanine, but also other metabolites, including adenine, orotic acid, cysteine, tyrosine, uracil, uh, all of them can form things that look like amyloid using electron, electron microscopy. They bind THT just like amyloid. They bind Congo red like amyloid. And they are toxic just like amyloids. Here we studied, uh, as compared to the first uh, study with the phenylalanine, uh, we did a bit more uh, uh, advanced assays. Uh, using uh, a fax analysis uh, with uh, uh, propidium iodine as well as anaxine to see the type of toxicity. And we could see that they are not only toxic, but they are toxic by uh, uh, late apoptosis, just as we see with proteins and, uh, uh, and peptide uh, amyloids. And we always have this control of alanine you could have a, a concentration of alanine as high as 10 milligrams per milliliter, and you don't see toxicity whatsoever as compared to tens of uh, percent of uh, uh, late apoptosis uh, uh, toxicity with the various uh, uh, metabolite assemblies. Uh, studying uh, uh, um, uh, amyloid uh, formation. Uh, this is a, a recent uh, uh, work that in collaboration uh, uh, with uh, Shiri Sides uh, uh, Sudri from the Rambam uh, Medical Center. Uh, this is actually uh, started uh, from a, a clinical observation. The researchers 
could see, uh, as many of you uh, may know, oxalate uh, uh, forms uh, uh, crystals uh, in kidneys, uh, in the case of uh, hyperoxaluria. But the researchers could see with uh, uh, some children abnormal uh, uh, electrical uh, ERG uh, uh, signal uh, without the formation of any crystals. And then we ask ourselves whether we, uh, we could see alternative non-crystalline uh, organization of the, uh, uh, of the oxalate. We could see that also oxalate can form uh, uh, amyloid-like fibers. And then by injecting uh, these fibers uh, uh, to uh, uh, rats, we could see the um, uh, abnormal ERG, which looks exact, looked exactly uh, uh, like uh, the one that was observed with the patient. So we started with observation in patients. We could see alternative structures, non-crystalline uh, fibrillar structure of oxalate, and we could replicate the, uh, the phenomena as could see in the patients, uh, in, in, those, uh, in those rats. So uh, this is from the bedside into the, uh, uh, into the bench. So we could see now that things that looks like amyloids could be formed by uh, uh, various uh, metabolites. As many of you know, working on, on, on proteins and uh, uh, peptide amyloids, uh, Whereas various polyphenols can inhibit uh, the formation uh, uh, of amyloids. And we, uh, we wanted to see if this is the case also with the structures made by the metabolites. Uh, and indeed, we could see that uh, both uh, uh, structures that were made by uh, amino acids, uh, as phenylalanine, or by nucleobases as adenine could be inhibited by EGCG, epicalocatechin galate, or by tannic acid uh, in a very efficient way. So also in this case, we see a property that is very similar in the case of metabolite amyloids as, we, as, as, as compared to uh, proteins and peptide one. Also other properties that I mentioned in the beginning that we could find in the peptides and later on people could see uh, uh, with uh, proteins could be replicated and found in the, in the case of the metabolite assemblies. So one of it is fluorescence. So this was published two years ago, a little bit more than two years ago. We could see fluorescence, luminescence in the visible that is very similar uh, uh, to what we, uh, we could see uh, with the uh, um, uh, proteins and peptides in uh, uh, for around 400 uh, uh, nanometers. So this is what we could see with the metabolite assemblies. I remind you, so about a decade earlier, we could see it with the dipeptide structures and in, the, in, the, in, in between, uh, people could see it with the amyloid. So it's a continuum between metabolites, peptides, and proteins. Same thing we could see with the mechanical properties. So this is the mechanical properties that we could see with the dipeptide structures 16 years ago, wow. <laughs> Uh, later on, it was uh, shown with the uh, protein-based amyloids. And now very recently, uh, we could see similar mechanical properties also with uh, uh, phenylalanine uh, uh, structures. This is a collaboration uh, with Nick Reynolds from, uh, from Australia. Uh, so again, metabolites, proteins, and peptides. Optics, 
metabolites, peptide proteins, and mechanics, uh, peptide, protein, and metabolites. And also in the case of piezoelectricity, we don't see it yet with the proteins, we are now working on it, but this is what we saw with the, uh, uh, in the case of the dipeptide structures. And uh, this is a work not by us, by a group in uh, Ireland, in which we now uh, collaborate. You can see also piezoelectricity in amino acid uh, uh, structures based on the supermolecular packing of these assemblies. So once again, you see the continuum in, in, the, in those properties. So what is the basis? So how, wh why do we see these uh, properties over and over again with structures that are not completely in the continuum as compared to uh, 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 proteins and, uh, and peptides? So proteins and peptides, you could think about it just as you can think about proteins as large peptides or uh, 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 peptides as small proteins, but why do you see it also with, um, uh, with uh, uh, the metabolites? So when you think about the organization of proteins and peptides, in the case of, of, uh, uh, of the amyloids, I remind you what you see with the beta sheet organization, which is the main organization that you see with amyloids, is this, this zigzag, a, a type of organization, up, down, up, down, up, down, as you see with the organization of the beta strain. What we see in the case of amino acid, in this case phenylalanine, is the organization in a similar way, if you could look at the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, we see similar zigzag organization, just like what we see with the beta sheet, but in a supramolecular assembly. So we uh, uh, coined this structure as supramolecular beta sheet. And uh, uh, this is the actual organization. This is the case of phenylalanine. Quite surprisingly, the first crystal structure of uh, Zwitter ionic uh, phenylalanine was done by us. Uh, uh, about six years ago, uh, but uh, this is not uh, uh, only uh, 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 only the case of uh, uh, phenylalanine. We see this organization generally in amino acid. Now we see it also with other metabolites uh, to form this layered supramolecular structure that have secondary structure very similar to what we see with uh, uh, proteins and peptides. So also in the structural organization we see this continuum of the uh, organization of these assemblies in the case of proteins and peptides of a beta sheet structure, in the case of the metabolite with supramolecular beta sheet structure. Another uh, uh, things that the uh, uh, extensions that we did in the last few years uh, uh, was uh, uh, getting quite extensively to the use of EAST models uh, to understand uh, uh, this phenomena of formation of structures by metabolites. Uh, this is a work uh, done by Dana Laor, a research associate in the lab, uh, uh, that constructed yeast model in which replicating what we see in the case of adenine accumulation in human patients, we knock out the genes that are related to adenine metabolism in, the, in those cells. And what we could see is a very uh, uh, strong uh, 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 sensitivity of these yeast uh, uh, cells to uh, feeding of the, um, uh, uh, of the yeast with, uh, with adenine. Usually when you, those of you are working in microbiology, usually you grow microorganisms as they give you more nutrition, uh, they, they are just going, uh, uh, growing better. In this case, if you block uh, the genes that are related to adenine metabolism, you have um, uh, sensitivity uh, to the formation of, uh, 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 to the feeding with this, uh, 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 with this uh, metabolite. 
And as you can see in panel D here, this uh, sensitivity is nonlinear, but it's, uh, uh, you could see a clear uh, sigmoidal dose response, which is consistent in a, in, with the situation of self-assembly. You see these properties, especially when you have some coordinated uh, um, uh, vent of self-assembly. So you have some threshold and when structure is being formed, you can have the uh, uh, formation of these structures. Moreover, just uh, uh, as uh, uh, we could see uh, with the uh, amyloids in vitro, we could see uh, 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 the formation uh, of these assemblies uh, in the yeast, and we could see the tannic acid polyphenols could uh, uh, um, affect, uh, inhibit the formation of these structures. And uh, uh, very importantly, we could see that by application of the polyphenols to the yeast cells, we could rescue the cells in spite of the fact that they still had very high adenine concentration in the cells. So the, the yeast were very sensitive to adenine upon feeding due to, as we state, the formation of these assemblies as we could see with the fluorescence labeling. But if we had polyphenols, we could have growth, normal growth of the cells in spite of the fact that they have very high concentration, 20 times higher as compared to normal yeast cells, which gives us some hope to the case of human patients in which we could be in a situation in which we control the assembly of the metabolites into toxic uh, structures without the need to uh, reduce the level of the metabolite into normal or semi-normal uh, concentrations. So until now I discussed proteins, peptides, metabolites, and try to show you the common denominator between all the different structures. What about the interplay between metabolites and proteins? We suggested that uh, um, actually metabolites may have the ability to seed the aggregation of proteins and which can explain uh, uh, some unexplained epidemiological uh, association between very high uh, levels of metabolite or high levels of metabolites and uh, neurodegenerative disorders. The most, the two uh, 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 well-known uh, uh, ones are those relates to quinolonic acid and Parkinson's disease and homocysteine and Alzheimer's disease. Those of you working in this area knows that you have uh, the uh, this epidemiolo epidemiological uh, association between the concentration of these uh, uh, metabolites and, and the disease. So here we studied whether quinolonic acid could form fibrillar assemblies. And indeed, we could see that this metabolite you could see here in panel A form very nice amyloids that look exactly as uh, 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 amyloids that we are used to uh, working on proteins and peptides. And uh, uh, this is a crystal structures uh, of the structures and made something that again, look like a beta sheet organization of these assemblies. Moreover, uh, alpha synuclein, which form amyloids in the case of Parkinson's disease, but not very easily, those of you working on a, a, a alpha synuclein knows that you need really to shake and uh, influence mechanically a, a alpha synuclein in order to get uh, the formation of the structures. If we add quinolonic acid seeds, we uh, 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 could induce quite readily the formation uh, uh, of amyloid by alpha synuclein. So we provide here some possible explanation uh, uh, for the uh, 
high, uh, uh, high concentration of quinolonic acid in the case of Parkinson's disease. Another uh, uh, example in which there's high concentration of a metabolite, which is related to uh, uh, amyloid-related neurodegenerative disorder is the case of homocysteine. Homocysteine, uh, high levels of homocysteine are quite strong indicators uh, for the possibility uh, um, to uh, have later uh, in your life uh, Alzheimer's disease. And moreover, those individuals who have uh, inborn nerve metabolism in which they have a, a genetically high concentration of homocysteine uh, have very high tendency uh, to get uh, Alzheimer disease later in later stage of their life. So we studied uh, homocysteine. Again, we could see the formation of things. Many of you worked on amyloids look exactly like amyloids using electron microscopy and using crystallography we could see again the organization of this uh, uh, of homocysteine into uh, uh, like a supramolecular beta sheet. Uh, so we, we could demonstrate that they also homocysteine uh, is um, uh, it can form amyloid like structures. And interestingly, uh, uh, we could see the uh, uh, this. Uh, we could uh, uh, build a uh, yeast model that, uh, as we see with the adenine, uh, we could see the toxicity of the, uh, of the homocysteine uh, uh, to the cells. But lastly, and very interestingly, uh, uh, we could see in a mice model uh, of Alzheimer's uh, disease, uh, uh, 4XFAD, many of you are familiar with, the colocalization of a, a beta amyloid deposits, as could stain with the 6E10 antibodies uh, that many of us work with, and also with antibodies towards the, um, uh, towards the um, homocysteine assemblies. So we could see uh, again the, the interplay between. Uh, uh, metabolites and, and proteins. This is something that we work extensively. This is not published yet. And we have several uh, 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 work in progress on this really the interplay between uh, uh, the, uh, the formation of these assemblies, uh, the, the metabolite assemblies and the uh, formation of, uh, 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 of amyloid structures by proteins and, and peptides. And, and fi finally, this is something that we mentioned many years ago, almost 15 years ago, uh, relates to the ability of uh, uh, peptides uh, uh, to serve in the, uh, in the uh, origin of life. Uh, it was based on our uh, recognition or the, the finding that uh, simple, peptides could form ordered assemblies and provide maybe the, the, the organization that was needed in the past for uh, the formation of uh, ordered structures. Now that, and it's uh, some of our friends, uh, Ronald Briak and others uh, are now working extensively of what we suggested just as a hypothesis uh, 15 years ago. Now understanding that also metabolites could form uh, 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 such structures and the fact that you can find amino acid and other metabolites on meteorites and uh, uh, other structures that were uh, uh, here ahead of the uh, uh, formation of life, may suggest that also metabolites could uh, be uh, related to the origin of life, uh, but this is uh, uh, something to be explored in the next few years. So to end up, uh, this is uh, something that I always uh, like to, uh, to mention. Uh, uh, all, all, we, uh, all we stated was uh, revealed by uh, Leonardo da Vinci many years before us. 
simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. We get a formation of very ordered structures with unique biological, chemical, and physical properties uh, by the assembly of uh, very simple building blocks. And for many years, uh, we thought that it would be dipeptides. Now we know that it's also metabolites. Uh, the work is, of course, uh, this one. Uh, this work was uh, done by, uh, oops, by many talented uh, individuals. And uh, uh, see over the, in the years, working on, the, on different structures. Uh, so uh, I made it quite fast and tried to convince you about the continuum between proteins uh, uh, peptides and uh, metabolites, and I will be happy to have, uh, to answer any questions if you have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Woody, for the great talk and great stuff. Um, I loved it. Um, I have uh, two questions to start with. Um, you have this cross seeding by metabolite aggregates uh, for amyloids. Um, can it be used to escape the toxic oligomer formation so that can be a potential route for, you know, therapeutic purposes? Can you comment on that? Hey, yes. Uh, did so you observe that? We think about two directions. One, it's maybe indeed, as, as you mentioned, the ability, if you have the, the right seating, to, uh, to avoid the, the oligomer uh, uh, assemblies and uh, direct it uh, uh, towards uh, fibers. But the other direction we think of is just to avoid uh, the, the aggregation of, of the seed at, at the first place. And uh, we saw last week another failure for uh, uh, therapy towards amyloids uh, and the uh, biogen uh, phase two clinical trials on, on Parkinson's disease. It might be that you need to target events that are earlier uh, to the formation of amyloids. And as we see now, the interplay between uh, metabolites and, uh, and, and proteins, it might be that avoiding earlier uh, uh, assemblies may uh, inhibit all this cascade from, from the first place. So this is something that we, we are exploring uh, uh, actively now. Another very quick question is, um, if it can cross see the amyloid aggregation, does it interfere with, uh, do they interfere with um, phase separation uh, and, um, you know, liquid, liquid liquid phase separation for IDPs? Yes. Yeah, so you observe that as well? Yeah, we, we don't know it yet. Uh, as I said, all these things are very new. Some of it's not published yet, but uh, yes, liquid liquid phase preparation is a very hot topic. Many of us are now working on it, and indeed, it's uh, uh, this is something to be explored. As I said, the advantage and disadvantage of working on very simple models is the fact uh, is the fact that we have immediately many competitors or friends that are working on this area, and I'm sure that you know. Diphenylalanine, uh, and when we started to work on it, it was quite obscure dipeptides. Now you buy it in Alibaba in a kilogram amount, and there are at least 300 groups in China who are studying diphenylalanine. Uh, so uh, phenylalanine or the others, it's, it is much easier to go. And so I'm sure that the, uh, other people will study it. Uh, I will have to find other directions in order to uh, I, I moved out of the dif uh, peptide field because it was too competitive. Now I have to find a, a new direction. Okay, that's great. Uh, um, so we have a lot of questions coming up. Let me uh, ask Galina. You can ask the question directly to the speaker. You are on the panel now. Following that, we have Brian. Then we'll have Griesinger. Go ahead, Galina. Hi, uh, very interesting work. Uh, really excited about the Piazzo paper as well. <laughs> yeah. So I've got a couple of very sort of short questions. So uh, with regards to metabolites, can a, a nucleoside or nucleotides form heterologous uh, amyloid structure with amino acids? I, I, I couldn't get the... Uh, Rams, did you get it? I, for some reason... Can you look I at the Q&A Q 
Q&A folder. Ah. I can read that. Uh, Galina, if you don't mind, can I read the question or? Ah, very audio is not... I said, ah, oh, glutamine polypeptide used in these conditions. No. Um, uh, yeah. Oh, so I, for your first question, Galina, uh, we didn't check it for uh, uh, glutamine polypeptide yet. That is a very important direction, which we should, uh, as I said, it's all this thing about the, the interplay is, is quite new. The second question is actually, this is some of the slides that I took off. Uh, so uh, um, until two years ago, we thought that uh, in the case of the peptides, we could see only beta sheet-like structures, but studying PFF, proline, phenylalanine, phenylalanine, we could see a cross beta just like what Meita Landau uh, uh, could see with, uh, with her peptides. Uh, this was published in uh, Nature Materials uh, 2019. Uh, I can send you the paper later on. Just write down and send Yeah, yes, this. please. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I, I will be happy to uh, discuss it uh, offline. But it's, it, it is a good question and it's, uh, uh, it's very relevant. And, uh, this is another, I, I didn't have the time to go into it, but uh, as Galina asked it, I, I, I should uh, mention it just in, in two sentences. All this, all this idea of, of amyloid formation, it's, all the time we keep finding new and new extensions uh, uh, to this uh, direction. A very interesting work was the science uh, paper by uh, Mita Landau and colleagues in which they demonstrated the ability to form cross alpha structures rather than cross beta structures. And we could see it only also with the a, a, a short uh, peptides. We have published the PFF the tripeptides. We have unpublished work on another metabolite that can form this. So this is another extension and very exciting one. Can, can you, can you ask Thank a you. question on that? So if you increase the length of the polyphenylalanine, you, yes. you look at dipeptide, what about tri, tetra, and so yeah, on? Yeah, so okay. Both, Again, you, add, you add, add, like other slides. Yes, other slides so that I took off. Which interaction will be dominating? Is it pi pi or electrostatic uh, and the stability okay. and so on? Yeah. So we studied, yeah, so we studied phenylalanine, diphenylalanine, triphenylalanine, tetraphenyl, tetraphenylalanine, pentaphenylalanine, in all these, and now we have unpublished work on large array peptides, which were very tough to, uh, to synthesize because they are, uh, some of us are synthetic chemists. You, you can appreciate the ability to, the, the problem to, uh, uh, to synthesize such um, hydrophobic uh, entities. But in all cases, for your question, Rams, in all cases, diphenylalanine, diphenylalanine, triphenylalanine, tetraphenylalanine, pentaphenylalanine, we could see the formation of things that look like a, a, a extended beta sheet structure. It's mainly stabilized by a, a pi interaction between the residues, as well as some hydrogen bonding between the layers. But uh, uh, this is uh, not really through electrostatic, but rather uh, uh, hydrophobic aromatic pi pi interactions, as well as uh, a, a hydrogen bonding between the layers. Thank you. Let's take a question from Brian and then yeah. Christian. Brian, go ahead. Hi, Dr. Yuzi. Uh, very cool to uh, So I have a question about the seeding effect of metabolites. So are the metabolites like quinoloic acid actually incorporating into the fibrils or just creating some kind of interface that catalyzes the fibro assembly. And then also do these peptides uh, also seed metabolite fibrils? Oh, you ask if, if we, we see the, the, the other way around, uh, if yes. I understood correctly. Uh, this is an interesting point. Uh, actually, I have to say that we didn't check it yet, but... Uh, it could be a, a, a very interesting direction because we usually think about uh, metabolites as being the more simple uh, structures 
and then thinking how they can see larger assemblies, but it, it might be also the, the other way around. So yeah, good question and we don't have the answer yet. Okay, yeah, because I was I was thinking that these, because uh, you mentioned the metabolites can also form fibrils, right? Yes. So very organized, so, yes. So could that create some kind of surface that is catalyzing the peptide formation? Or oh, do, you okay. think, do you think the metabolite we, and the peptide kind of form some amyloid together? Yes, yeah, so we think, so the question, the, the answer to both questions is yes. Uh, uh, we can see the, the cost structure between the metabolite and the, and the protein amyloids for your second question. And also for the first question, uh, we could clearly see just by the, the, the mere organization of the metabolites into um, a, a beta sheet like structures in coordination with the metal ions, we could see uh, the formation of, uh, of catalysts. Uh, another uh, paper that I can send it also to you later on, all, all, the, all the slides that I took off. It's another paper that we published in Nature Catalysis in 2019 as well, in which we demonstrated Phenyl alan the, the, uh, the structure of phenyl alanin coordinated with zinc for the ability to act as a, a very efficient uh, uh, catalyst. And, and exactly as you say, it is based on, on the ability to form this well ordered uh, uh, surface, uh, which could serve as a, as a catalyst. And, and indeed, this is what we see. So the answer to both your question is yes. It could okay. act as catalysts and it could uh, form core structures together with the proteins and peptides. Thank you. Christian, go ahead. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, hi, Ehud. Yeah. Um, I, have a, um, I, I remember uh, like 25 years ago or so, there was yes. um, Meir, Meir La Half yes. uh, giving a lecture in, in Frankfurt, where I was at the time. Yes. And um, he had crystals of also of just of amino acids. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't exactly remember which ones they were. Um, for sure it was glycine because I remember yes. that he was talking about chiral crystals, which were then yeah, yes. of, uh, chiral conformations of uh, glycine were, uh, were crystallizing. Now in your case, um, I mean, what, what do you see as a, I mean, I don't remember whether he had phenyl yeah, yeah. as well, but I mean, phenyl, phenyl also crystallizes. So yeah. is it the conditions under which you form the, Nanotubes, or then uh, also the the, the the gels, or what, what? What? Why does it not crystallize? <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. It's it's really a, another very nice picture that I have, uh, like the one that I showed in the beginning. I have a, a Meir Love, which for me, you know, I, I, as as uh, Ram said, I was a, a student in a department at the Weizmann Institute in previous century, and the Meir was one of the really the, the founding fathers of. Uh, this uh, uh, study of, of self-assembly. And then about a year ago, I brought my group, Meir is, Meir is now uh, he's 85 or, uh, he's, 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 yeah, he's, he's not young, but he's still active. And uh, so I brought my group to the Weizmann uh, Institute to meet Meir. And he was so full of ideas because as you said, he worked on, the, on this area 20, 25 years ago. And indeed, this was the case. And then glycine is another, it's, it's interesting that you, you ask it, uh, ask about it. Glycine is another very interesting uh, uh, um, uh, direction because glycine can form very stable structures, maybe related also to some pathologies. Uh, and, and, and indeed, this, he was studying all these, all these assemblies. He had very, uh, um, strong ideas about things that uh, we just rediscovered. So I brought them, my group was sitting, uh, those of you are familiar with Jewish traditions. It's like a rabbi and the students are, are sitting around the rabbi. And this was the case in, in Meir Lav and my, myself and my students. And indeed, uh, many things that we now rediscover. And I, again, I didn't have the time to go into it. He was studying tyrosine, tyrosine assembly. If you think about tyrosine, tyrosine as compared to phenylalanine. So tyrosine, as we all know, is much more polar than phenylalanine because it has an additional hydroxy group. However, 
phenyl alanine is almost one order of magnitude more soluble as compared to, to tyrosine. Uh, tyrosine is very insoluble amino acid. This is due to the organization into dimers, things that we now uh, 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 study. Mayer Lab had the, the initial ideas with the limited, uh, limited uh, technology that was available uh, several decades ago. And so it's really, it's a, there's so much to learn about the amino acids. Uh, thank you so much for asking this and the opportunity to mention also the pioneering work of uh, Mayer Lab. Really. Amino acid assembly is crystallography of amino acid. Okay, Binzu and then uh, Danilo. Binzu, go ahead. Fascinating talk, Dr. Gazette. I really appreciate your reductionist uh, approach. Uh, I have a couple of uh, short questions about the uh, isolation of those uh, like single amino acid fibers as well as like a kinetics of formation. So in, you give an example of a PKU disease, which you stain, uh, you can visualize by staining using antibody, also by binding to like Congo red, which has the evidence of those, uh, uh, the, the, the amyloid. Have, have, have you been able to isolate uh, those uh, like uh, phenylalanine amyloid yes. and actually using like electron microscope TEM to visualize it, or oh, it's different. Yes, yes, we could see it. Uh, uh, you can still see my screen. I, I will go to the most recent one. We can see it not only. We can see it with uh, with. Uh, let's see. Can you see my screen now? It says um, uh, paper here, and uh, which we can see it with the uh, AFM. We could see it with also with electron microscope. Uh, uh, so this is a paper just published a few months ago, which we see it with, uh, with the AFM. So we can use microscopy in order to see it. Yes. But these are you, you like yes. uh, in vitro uh, prepared, right? It's not isolated. Ah, in vitro, from... ah, you ask whether we can see it in, 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 the, in the brains or, or right. in the biological tissues. So in this case, this is uh, what I demo, uh, what I showed with the uh, with the brains. Uh, we don't see it with electron microscopy. What oops, a little bit slow? Yes. Okay. This is what we could see in in, in human samples. Mm -hmm. So we could see the the staining of the deposits with antibodies as well as with Congo red. Uh, looking for a, a electron microscopy of samples from the brain, we didn't do it. It could be interesting to, to study, as well as maybe uh, NMR. We have here some, the some of the best experts in the world on, on NMR of, uh, of amyloids. And uh, this could be also interesting to, to look at the human samples. But we looked only on, uh, uh, on structures that were made in vitro not those that were made, uh, uh, were uh, isolated from, uh, from patients. Okay, yeah, I guess it's probably going to be difficult. Um, yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, the, uh, I got, regarding the kinetics of amyloid formation of those single amino acid fibers versus longer, like a dye or, you know, uh, yes. or like a, a penta, uh, peptide sequence from, uh, a beta, uh, how's the uh, connected compared with each other? Is the single amino acid fiber takes <coughs> much longer time to form when they are at the same concentration with yes, you know, yes. longer sequences? Yes, at the same concentration, it takes longer. And it's very much, which is uh, very uh, uh, reasonable, uh, uh, where it's uh, uh, very much depending, dependent on, on the on the concentration since it, it, it's a nucleation growth event. Uh, what we see again, this is a paper hopefully to be published in collaboration with Thomas Knowles from Cambridge. We could see studying uh, phenylalanine uh, um, uh, assembly, we could see a very strong dependence on the concentration with a threshold. So until some concentration 
you don't see the formation of fibers whatsoever and up to a, a, a specific concentration, you, we could see the, uh, the clear formation of the, of the structures, which relates to a nucleus, relatively large nucleus, probably of 20 plus, uh, 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 20 plus units uh, as, uh, uh, to be formed. So for your question, you need a larger concentrations, but it, it behaves as typical amyloid, a sigmoid, like you see the leg phase, then you see the, uh, um, then you see the growth phase and the plateau. And uh, it's also a very uh, much depending on the concentration, just like you see uh, with amyloids, similar to classical works like uh, Bill Eaton's uh, work on uh, the aggregation uh, from, uh, from the 80s and, and the 70s even uh, uh, when he was studying um, the aggregation of proteins. So we see the same things with the, with the uh, uh, metabolites. Thank you. One more last quick question about whether you have a study, uh, you know, using your reductionist approach, study the modified, uh, you know, short peptide, for example, phosphorylated or acetylated, like a short peptides, yes. Yes. and, uh, you know, study like the charge or, you know, or any of those modifications affect their uh, formation. Yes, so uh, indeed, we, we, we check the, uh, all kinds of different uh, modifications, as well as cyclic diketoantiperazines, derivatives of the, of the assemblies. Uh, of course, it affects the, uh, the final organization, but this is also relates to one of uh, Ram's uh, questions in the beginning. The main driving force, as we see it with the crystal structure, uh, also NMR studies, is aromatic interactions and, and hydrogen bonding. So also in the case of a modified termini or even a cyclic dipeptides, diketopiperazines, we see the formation of the structures as also in those cases, we have the pi pi interactions and the uh, uh, hydrogen bonding. Uh, uh, so it is independent usually uh, uh, of the charge termini uh, uh, the, um, in order to get the, the formation of these structures. So you think, uh, those, you yes, think those modifications play minor roles only? They play minor role uh, in the organization because it's mainly driven, as I said, by pipeline interactions and hydrogen bonding. Uh, moreover, uh, we have also other uh, modification that is based on the changing of the aromaticity of the aromatic system. So we have things like uh, the study of pentafluorophenylalanine or uh, fluorinated uh, phenylalanine in different uh, para auto meta orientations as well as the, uh, uh, the, the interaction of uh, co-assemblance day systems with the pi rich and pi poor uh, uh, systems. And then we can modulate uh, the, the interaction by playing around with the electronic properties of the, of the pi system. Uh, so modifying of the pi system can affect the organization. But basically we could get the structures also with those with are blocking the termini or even in the case of the diketopiperazine. Thank you so much. I need to read yeah. your, more of your papers. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very um, much. Danny Log, can you ask a question? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. OK. Hello, Hudi. Nice to see Hi, you. Uh, great to, <laughs> to hear you. I don't see you, but great to hear you. <laughs> OK. Um, it, it was really moving for me to remember the happy times of Miami. Thank you. <laughs> Hopefully we will be back uh, in, a, in a better life situation than what today. Hopefully very soon. Well, my question uh, is related to the stereochemistry of uh, amino acids. So I wonder, what about if we use D-phenylalanine instead of L-phenylalanine? Can we use the phenylalanine as a seed or they act as inhibitors of full land amyloid growth? Yes, excellent question. So 
actually with the D-phenylalanine, you could get similar formation because they, it's just a mirror image of what you see. But a, a, a nice work from a group in India was showing, uh, uh, as I said, it's a very low barrier to get into a competition in this field. They could demonstrate nicely that you can use actually D-phenylalanine, the D-isomer of phenylalanine to inhibit the, the formation of the fibrils. Uh, so we're, they were thinking about it as a therapeutic way in order to, uh, 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 to um, uh, target the aggregation of the structures because uh, uh, many of you are working on uh, uh, organic chemistry and uh, resemic uh, 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 mixtures. If you have some impurities of the of the uh, other enantiomer, you can interfere with the interaction. So, to your first to your original question, indeed we can have the uh, uh, the D amino acid uh, form uh, uh, amyloid structures uh, that are look just like the uh, those formed by the L amino acid L phenylalanine. But uh, people are thinking about actually the use of the of the isomer as an inhibitory uh, um, um, an inhibitory agent to the formation of the of the fibers by the phenylalanine. Oh, wonderful! Thank thank you yes. so much. Hope thank to you. see you soon. <laughs> Hope to see you soon. <laughs> okay, with that, let's uh, let's conclude the formal session and we can move on to the informal one. Thank you very much. Uh, Udi for a yeah. great talk and thanks to the participation from the audience. Um, uh, please remember to uh, circulate the early career researcher participation, which does not include regular faculty uh, track um, scientists. But uh, if you're a junior faculty member or going for promotion, please do email us with the topic um, and your recent findings and we'll try to find a slot for you. So now let's move on to the informal session. So let's see, we have a question from John. You had something to say, great talk and good to see you. That's what the message from John. <laughs> so you mentioned yeah, about the solubility um, to Grissinger's question, solubility yes. of um, metabolites as well as amyloids. So we have a nice work from um, uh, Goto, Yuji Goto from Japan, Osaka University. He just left, I think. Yeah. Um, did you ever think about creating the phase diagram where you can look at the solubility in different phases and their stability and so on and so forth to, to enable easy um, way to optimize the conditions where you can look at the aggregation? So this also relates to, to what was done with uh, by Meir La yeah. you may you, Do you know Meir? Uh, yeah, yeah, Meir yeah. La yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so actually the, we, we are uh, discovering all this... Uh, very nice body of literature about amino acid uh, crystallization done by Meir as well as uh, uh, Leslie uh, Lazarovich and uh, the, uh, the Weizmann. Uh, so this was done in the past, but uh, and they were very talented uh, organic chemists and supermolecular chemists. But what we discover now is the, is the ability to form it in a physiological related mm. uh, conditions. But, uh, Yes, uh, we could see we could see the effect. We could see the effect of temperature, effect of uh, of pH, and interestingly, it is seem to be that in con in, in um, conditions that are uh, uh, are related to what we see with uh, with patients, um, you can get the aggregation. It's um, mm. uh, and under those conditions, so. It, uh, the nature uh, is was very smart mm. by working at the, the concentration of the metabolites about let's say one order of magnitude lower than the, the aggregation concentration. But, the, but as soon as you have mutations, some inborn health metabolism disorders, you are getting into the re, uh, into the uh, regime which you have the aggregation. So it's, uh, nature was smart, you know, not on all, all uh, amino acids have the, the same uh, uh, concentration in, in uh, 
Well, overall concentration doesn't matter, right? Overall concentration does matter to some extent, but the local population density matters. Yes, also, Just like yes, the amyloid or antimicrobial case. So are there any yes. questions from the audience? If you raise your hand, we can promote you to the panel and you can join us for informal chat. And also from the panel, Magda and Bikash, feel free to ask questions. So I have another question as well, if nobody has. Uh, I, I have a question, Ram. Go ahead. Can go ahead. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I really enjoyed your talk. It's really, really uh, inspiring and impressive. And it's really nice to see that you have so many followers. I mean, maybe a hassle now, but it's kind of nice that you're showing that like you, what you're doing, it's really very, very unique and um, progressive. So um, my question is, we, we talked a lot about, and you mentioned quite a bit about um, seeding properties of the metabolites and the amino acids, but uh, have you seen inhibition uh, of any of the metabolites? Because it can go a different way too uh, on the yeah. amyloid formation. Not yet, because we... You, you study uh, the formation of amyloid and the... Uh, uh, you know that uh, seeding is quite an uh, uh, is quite important property. It goes also to classical works like uh, of Per Westermark from the even the 80s or the 90s, in which he demonstrated the ability of all kind of uh, of structures to seed the formation of amyloids. Uh, uh, he could see um, very silk as well as uh, uh, other proteins, uh, uh, even carbohydrates to see the formation uh, of uh, amyloid, uh, protein amyloids. I don't recall the other way around, which, but it could be interesting. So you, you suggest a, a situation in which actually the metabolites are interfering with the formation of the the toxic assemblies. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's exactly the way because um, this, uh, we have been seeing it like long time ago uh, with uh, a peptide seeding to the amyloid okay. forming protein. So if you really play with the concentration, we can find that uh, the same molecule can either accelerate or inhibit the aggregation. And like, even if you think of it structurally, uh, they do all form beta sheet like, but the beta sheet they need to be to have that like nice engagement and arrangement in order to have the the hydrogen bonding and also the side side chain interaction. So it, it kind of makes sense that some of metabolites which are, are capable of forming amyloids can actually stabilize uh, conformers which are non-fibrillar. Uh, I don't know whether they're toxic or not. I mean, this is but a not different story, but not non-fibrillar or like- so This is something that was published. Uh, maybe I missed it. it uh, yeah. So what, what are the, I'm, I'm writing to me, or maybe you can send me the paper later on. So what-, what Yeah, were there, the, are, there are like a couple of examples which uh, with that it's, um, uh, it's if you're amyloid? interested, I can send you like- um, Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm very interested. In this. this is, as I said, this is quite new for us, but the, this interplay, the ability to have more than one component in the system is, is very intriguing. And uh, we just begin to unfold what, what we see there. So any, uh, anything that we can learn from the peptide and uh, polypeptide uh, field uh, could be uh, extremely interesting for us. Yeah, yeah, I'll send you because it's uh, it just, it may, maybe it's, yeah, uh, anyways, uh, I'll just follow with that. Yeah, but it's really exciting work. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'll just <laughs> let, let the others talk. <laughs> Okay, and hopefully uh, we'll meet again in the. I, I spoke with Rams before the beginning. I'm yeah, looking yeah. forward to to the next uh, Miami meeting. Definitely. Hello. definitely. Good morning, Yehud. Ah, okay. Rakesh, how, how are you? Friend, how are you? <laughs> pretty good. Pretty good. Okay, shop. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I think uh, Magda alluded to the question. Do you know? Do you know if the for example, the synuclein 
seeded with the metabolites is different than normally aggregated like heat or synuclein, which is the conformation or conformers, polymorphs. I think this is, this could be very interesting. Yes, this is extremely interesting. This is, as I said, we're just beginning to unfold this. Maybe we'll have a chance to collaborate now if you are interested to, to study it because uh, uh, we are looking for uh, people who with experience in looking at the, the different uh, polymorphs of uh, alpha synuclein. We are less yeah, we, I have a student, uh, her whole project is about polymorphs of synuclein. And, uh, I know, and I, I heard still you. still developing so. all the methods, but I think this is fascinating if the metabolites can see something different. So we, we, should, we should test it. Uh, yeah, I think we'll look at it. We'll, we'll get in touch. But uh, We'll get in touch. Are, are you coming to our region in the... In I the... have my ticket and then I delayed it. I was hoping to come uh, next month, so maybe. Well, I'm... Maybe, yeah. <laughs> now they, 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 all the airports are closed. Until yeah. February 25. Yeah, so I'm vaccinated. I got my second shot in January, so we are protected. But the travel history. Me too. Yes. Great job. Say hi great. To so I hope to see you here. And uh, Thank let you. me know if you are coming. I will. Thank you, Rakesh. Um, we have a question from uh, Galina uh, in the Q&A. Yes. I can read the question for you. Are the core structures of peptide folds the same for each type of peptide? Or is there a heterogeneity? Has this been looked at by cryo-EM? Not yet. We, we didn't look for cryo I see. That. Are the core pe uh, peptide folds the same for heterogeneity? Uh, no, we are not so... Um, well, we do some cryo yeah, but it's not our main expertise. So again, Galina, are you still here or? Uh, Let me see if she's here. Um, yes, I, I'll promote her to the panel. Uh, hi, yes, so. Yeah. Hi, Galina. <laughs> Thank you for the question. So yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's an excellent one, but we didn't check it, so. Um, As I so told um, those of you who know me, I, I like very much collaboration. So if you are interested in uh, cryo EM work. Uh... Yeah, so to, just to add up to the previous conversation about uh, the cofactors. So cofactors do play a role to a different uh, formation of the different core of the amyloid structure for the proteins, which are a bit bigger. So for example, tau, we've got uh, different uh, protein folds from the same protein sequence for different yeah, diseases yeah. like CBD, AD and such. So just wondering whether there is uh, heterogeneity also with the shorter peptides. But yeah, we, we do the, the cryo -EM for it, yeah. Yeah, so we, I, we love to uh, collaborate on this and, and check it. It's, it's really fascinating area and uh, we don't know yet. Excellent. So we'll be, so we will be in touch uh, uh, offline. I. Uh, I will also uh, uh, send you the, the information about the, uh, the paper on, on the, what you asked about the alpha helix, the, the cross alpha structure. So I will yeah, send sure. you. I look in, I look in my PI as well. Yes. Hilal will be, will be happy. <laughs> yeah, great. Okay, I have a lot of questions. We I can have a couple of questions, Ramsky. 7.30. Yeah, go ahead, Bikash, go ahead. Yeah, Bikash. very exciting talk. So uh, yeah. my, my Great to see you, Bikash. Yeah, my yeah. first question is kind of like bit like physiological process, like how these yes. dipeptide or tripeptide forms. So recently in one of the work, like we have shown that like the proteolysis, like for example, some proteolytic enzymes, as an mm -hmm. example, like insulin degrading enzyme that is known to okay, leave yes. the A beta to many different fragments, right? And, and like very interestingly, if you look at the cleavage side, we have exactly the diphenyl side, which can be cleaved. So wow. my, my question is that in a physiological environment in a normal normal uh, human, not like Alzheimer's patient, so these things are going on, right? So uh, like, how do you think that in physiological process, even though the concentration is very less, but the diphenyl aniline is getting deposited in the brain, so, but we don't see like fibers in the uh, healthy brains, like, uh, so how do they recycle over time? So we, we don't know yet, but uh, this is a very interesting question about the 
insulin uh, degrading enzyme, I, I think it's, they have, we don't fully understand what's going on there, but it's clearly they have a role in, the, in disease and there are more and more information about this. Looking at diphenylalanine or slightly longer uh, uh, peptide assemblies in the brain, we didn't see it yet, but I, I think that if the concentration is high enough and it's also a matter of uh, some uh, statistical thermodynamics, if it's you have long enough time and the accumulation of the peptides, you can get the formation of these assemblies. So uh, I yeah, think- yeah, I do the... agree on that. Actually, we have seen that. Actually, we are not working on millimolar concentration that you are using in the in vitro to- No, millimolar, it's, it's for the amino acids. And, and uh, 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 but for the dipeptide, you can see it in, in a micromolar. Yeah, so that is what actually we saw. Like when we saw the peptides is getting cleaved by these enzymes, we see the yeah. aggregates, but they are mostly yes. globular rather than like the uh, elongated like filament structure. Okay, so, but so maybe the globular are uh, is toxic or even more toxic as compared no, no, to No, they the... are not toxic. Like surprisingly, they are, they are tested not to be toxic. Not toxic. Oh, yeah. Okay, interesting. So that is, actually, that is actually we are thinking for a very long time how to prove this kind of thing. Uh, okay. So what is very interesting. It, it was published. I I I didn't see. Uh, it's it. under review now, so it's we are the review process. Uh, best it's of luck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my next question is actually. I wasn't the referee because I I never heard about it. <laughs> yeah. So my next. Question please was... please send me when it will be accepted. Yes. It's in the bio archive also. We will send it's you. In the bio archive. Can you send me the, the, will, the yeah. manuscript? Sure. Yeah. Great. Thank okay. you. Yeah, my next question is on actually on the KLVFF, like the sequence yes. that you have shown. So like I, I was looking for some paper from like 2017, if I remember clearly from the Louis Serpel group. Actually, they are trying yes. to take the full length of A beta and scramble A beta and reverse A beta. Yeah, and yes. they, they found that all these sequences can form fibers. But, but, yes. but the only difference is that like they found that the wild type like A beta 42 is very toxic but the other two are not toxic. So I was wondering like in your case, like for this short fragment, have you ever tried to scramble it and see like how the position of the phenylalanine, diphenylalanine in a sequence actually matters the toxicity? Uh, we didn't do it, but the, um, uh, actually, yes, we have this paper with um, uh, uh, Ian, uh, uh, in which we're, we did the, not, not scramble it, but uh, we had this uh, uh, the reverse uh, uh, structure and find it. Uh, I, I can send you later on and we see different toxicity actually. This was oh, published in the Chemical Communications uh, 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 with Ian Emily. Uh, we published it uh, a few years ago. So you are right, it's just the same it's 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 not scrambled, but the the, uh, the um, uh, opposite uh, orientation, and we see uh, just a different. Stop share, and maybe I, I can find this. Uh, oh, now I see all of you, and I can find this paper. Oh, oh I I will send it yeah, to yeah, you. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe I can, on, but, uh, I can pull it out. It yeah. was the paper published with uh, Ian Emily, uh, I think two or three years ago. With uh, Santu Bera, my excellent postdoc. Uh, uh, from, yep. uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, sure. So it's 11.38. Um, this was a great talk and great conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I <laughs> really enjoyed it. Much. Still yeah. a lot of questions because this is like an exciting field. Um, yeah, it's keep yeah. expanding, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so expanding and and uh, going to smaller uh, building blocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, this is this is chemistry, right? The intermolecular yes. uh, interaction is the world. Otherwise, yeah, but I, know, I, I should be a I, I, inert I, I, world, and nobody would interact with anybody else. <laughs> Nothing will happen. <laughs> Next time, instead of putting the the picture of uh, uh, Joe Biden, I should put the picture of Mayor Love. And it was really, I, I, looked, I took this uh, picture with my, with my cell phone. And uh, I don't know, as I said, uh, how many of you are familiar with the way in which uh, students are going uh, uh, 
around the rabbi and learning the, the script, the Torah from the rabbi, but it was exactly like that. And uh, Mayor, uh, Mayor now should be, I, I will tell you. So are you in touch with uh, Joe Biden now? I know. <laughs> well, uh, so how is it? How 